Hello and welcome to the next video of this series. In this video we will talk about the integrated electrocardiogram front end circuit and its features. Now that we understand the main functional blocks, let's jump back to our original diagram of a single lead ECG acquisition system. This is a pretty complicated diagram with a lot of different things for customers to consider, but TI actually offers a great solution that can simplify these systems. For example, a lot of the blocks fit nicely into our single channel ADS1291, as you can see here. In a similar way, the three lead version is a great fit for our two channel ECG AFE, the ADS1292. Both channels in the ADS1292 use the same clock and reference inputs to sample the electrode signals simultaneously. We can even fit a higher number of leads into a single chip. Here we show a 12 lead ECG system complete with WCT node and chest lead measurements and we see that nearly the entire system can be integrated into a single chip like the ADS1298. The ADS1291 and ADS1292, which are the 1 and 2 channel AFEs, have similar performance specs. These devices have very low noise, high input impedance front end PGAs, and 24 bit simultaneous sampling Delta Sigma ADCs, which can support data rates from 125 SPS up to 8K SPS. They have integrated right leg drive amplifier, integrated lead off detection, integrated respiration impedance measurement for ADS1292R, integrated test signals for verification, and integrated low drift ADC reference with oscillator. The higher channel count versions, ADS1294, 1296, and 1298 have even more integrated features and even better performance. For example, the integrated ADC can go up to 32 KSPS sampling rate and supports lower noise and higher common mode rejection ratio. Apart from the features which are integrated into lower channel devices, these higher channel devices have integrated WCT amplifier and integrated analog pacemaker output. Let's take a look at the integrated PGAs and make sure they match what we expect from an ECG front end. The PGAs on the ADS129X devices are CMOS amplifiers. This means they have a very low input bias current of 200 picoamperes datasheet maximum, very high input impedance of greater than 100 mega ohms. The voltage noise is also extremely low and the current noise is negligible, making them capable of measuring small ECG signals. These PGAs also allow for great flexibility in the application design with programmable gains from 1 to 12. The gain settings are changed with a simple register write command through the device's SPI interface. The right leg drive amplifier and summoning junction for the common mode voltage are also integrated with the ADS129X devices. This feature allows for some user programmability in order for the customer to design the best performance circuit depending on their application. An internal register selects which electrode inputs are allowed to feed to the RLD amplifier, inverting input through the register summing junction. The output of the amplifier and feedback loop are connected to external device pins, which allow the user to set the gain and bandwidth of the RLD circuit. Finally, the non-inverting input is either connected internally to mid-supply or it is connected to an external device pin. This pin allows the user to drive the non-inverting input with another DC voltage. This option is also selectable through device register settings. The ADS129X also integrates lead-off detection using integrated programmable current sources with very high input impedance. In DC lead-off, current is injected onto the patient and then the voltage is measured by two comparators, one on the high side input and one on the low side. Each comparator reports its output continuously to a status word that is output with each sample. In AC leadoff, the same current sources inject an out-of-band square wave current onto the patient. In that scenario, the measured voltage corresponding to the leadoff current source frequency is analyzed in post the connection between the patient and electrode. In the ADS1294, 6, and 8 devices only, three buffer amplifiers are also integrated to generate the Wilson Central Terminal, or WCT. The circuit allows the user to pick the three limb leads from any of the electrode inputs using a register configurable MUX. Each electrode is buffered and connected to another register summing junction to obtain the WCT voltage. 
which will be output onto an external device pin. Then the user connects the WCT pin to the negative channel input pins of the chest lead channels to directly measure the chest leads. As some applications also require the measurement of a patient's respiration rate, the R version of the ADS-129X includes an integrated respiration feature. This feature measures the patient's respiration through a technique known as impedance pneumography. Essentially, this technique aims to measure the small changes in impedance across the thoracic cavity or chest as the patient inhales and exhales. In this diagram, we are modeling the patients by a combination of a constant impedance, R baseline, and a changing impedance, R breathe. R baseline is a constant value, ranging between a few hundred ohms to a few thousand ohms. R breathe corresponds to the change in the body's impedance as the thoracic cavity expands and contracts. First, the ADS-129XR device outputs a high-frequency square wave excitation signal on the respiration mode pins. The change in impedance of the patient due to breathing will modulate the amplitude of the square wave. Second, the channel 1 input sends this amplitude modulation waveform. Finally, inside the ADS-129XR, there is a demodulated circuit that will remove the high-frequency square wave. This will leave only the low-frequency waveform that corresponds to the patient's breathing. The DC common mode voltage in the demodulated waveform results from the total constant impedance in the respiration signal path. The amplitude of the demodulated waveform is the result of the changing impedance, R breathe. This waveform is then output from the ADC for analysis by the customer. The ADS-129XR actually implements this using several passive components. Capacitors C1 and C5 in this diagram are used to AC couple the electrode inputs. Resistors R3, R4, R5, and R6 form resistor dividers on each input to bias them back to mid-supply. C3 and C4 are used to AC couple the respiration modulation signal on the RESP underscore MODP and the RESP underscore MODN pins. Series resistors are also used to limit the AC current. Finally, C2 and C6 are added for additional fault protection. The larger patient protection resistors, which are normally used to limit the DC current, cannot be placed directly on the respiration path. The noise from the resistors, plus the DC component of the resulting demodulated waveform, will prevent the respiration waveform from being resolved. One aspect of ECG measurements that we have yet to discuss is pacemaker detection. Pacemakers are electronic medical devices used by patients with abnormal heart rates or arrhythmias. These devices initiate the cardiac cycle in a well-controlled manner such that the heart can maintain a more normal level of function. It is important for many ECG systems to detect if a pace artifact exists in the ECG data to help doctors decide how to treat those patients and know whether a defibrillation shock can be administered. The ADS-1294, 6, and 8 include a circuit to facilitate pace detection. The device allows the user to choose which ECG channel is selected for pace detection, as you can see from the circle part of the diagram. That channel input is sent to the pace amps, which are differential to single-ended converters. The output is connected to pins on the device. This allows the users to create their own pace detection circuit outside of the ADS-129X. Otherwise, in order to measure pace, all ADC channels would have to operate at faster data rates, which allows more noise into the ECG measurement. Finally, here is a table showing different features and capabilities of the ADS-129X series and the ADS-129X series. This table should help as a cheat sheet for designers to select the right devices. This concludes the introduction to TI's integrated ECG front end and its features. For more information, visit ti.com/medical. Thanks for watching.